started. If you have your Bibles, uh, turn with me to uh, 2 Chronicles chapter 7. We're going to be kind of jumping around tonight. Uh, I don't do a lot of topical sermons, but uh, tonight we are going to do that. If you have a worksheet, there is a worksheet back there if you want to get the worksheet there and uh, follow along with us. Uh, Tonight I want to speak to you about seeing revival continue. Most of the time when we have our Bible conference, we're looking towards revival. Uh, But I hope everybody understands, for about the last eight weeks, we've been in revival. Uh, We had six more professions of faith on Sunday, and uh, we uh, have baptized 27 uh, since January the 1st. Uh, So God is doing an amazing work. Uh, two weeks, we're going to baptize again, and and uh, we're just we're just excited. So I I entitled this "Seeing Revival Continue." Father, thank you for the night, and God, just thank you for revival. Lord, you just have blessed us so much, and God, we give you the glory. And God, I just thank you uh, how you love us, Lord. You just have your hand on our church, and. God, I thank you for even tonight, the Awana program that's going on and the youth discipleship. I thank you for the good group that is here. And God, we do look forward to this Sunday. God, I pray for Dr. Johnny Lewis. And Lord, I know he's excited about coming here also. And God, we just pray that revival would continue uh, in our church. Uh, God, just uh, be with those who are sick. Uh, God, those who are hurting. I'll be with those who's lost loved ones especially. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Number one, and we'll just go through here. Uh, got four points tonight, and uh, we're going to do something a little different uh, when I get through, and you'll understand what and why uh, in just a few minutes. Number one, pray for God's presence to continue. If we are going to see rot- revival to continue, we have to pray for God's presence. And in 2 Chronicles chapter 7, uh, King Solomon had just uh, dedicated and built the temple. And uh, he is saying a prayer here of dedication over the temple. And he had just finished that there. And I want you to look at verse 1. And when Solomon had finished praying, fire came down from heaven and consume the burnt offering and the sacrifices, and the glory of the Lord filled the temple. And we know that the Shekinah glory of God was at the Ark of the Covenant. We know once in a year, uh, you know, the high priest would go into uh, the temple, and he would go in and he would, uh, you know, confess the sins of the people, and, and that, you know, and God's presence was there. And, uh, you know, his presence was so strong there. Uh, if that priest went in there unworthily and did not confess his sins, uh, he would die on the spot, okay? Matter of fact, if you read even Old Testament history, they would literally tie a rope to his leg in case that happened so they could pull him out of there. You say, well, Mike, why are you sharing that? Because that's how strong the presence of God is. And we know they... They had sacrifices, uh, and these sacrifices, uh, you know, were up to God, and they, they covered the sins per se. Uh, and, and we now, we can go straight to our high priest, which is Jesus Christ. But the two points I want to point out in verse 1 is the fire, okay? And we know fire can, you know, it, it can purify, but it can also destroy. And even when... The day of Pentecost, they were flames of fire there. Uh, So again, that just shows the power of the Holy Spirit. And folks, we we are seeing the glory of the Lord. I I was again, you know, as I was going back and I turned around and looked this way while uh, someone was praying going out, I just saw people lined up from one end to the other. Folks, that's part of the glory of God. That's part of what God is doing. And... uh, You have to have the glory of God to have true revival. It can't be a man-made thing is what I'm trying to say. Verse 2, And the priest could not enter the house of the Lord 
because of the glory of, because the glory of the Lord had filled the Lord's house. And uh, folks, I'm just telling you, uh, my prayer is uh, even for this Bible conference and even going ahead is that if a lost person walks in this sanctuary and it's and I'm telling you, it, folks, it's not an auditorium, okay? It's a sanctuary. It's where God is. That that person could not leave this place before they got saved. And that's what the glory of the Lord can do. And it says, when all the children of Israel saw how fire came down and the glory of the Lord uh, on the temple, all right? And, and again, you know, the power of God and and. You know, I think of the song, Heaven Came Down and Glory Filled My Soul there. Now look what look at the reaction there. They bowed their faces on the ground and, and on the pavement and worshiped and praised the Lord. And folks, that's what the glory of the Lord will do in our hearts and in our lives. Uh, we will, you know, we will, we will want to worship. We will have to worship. We know Jesus is worthy of our worship. And then the praise uh, is just giving God the glory and the praise uh, for what he's doing. And then it says, the Lord saying, for he is good and his mercy endures forever. And I will say this about any worship time or any church service, there is nothing more important in worship than God's presence. God's presence. And I tell you folks, I just... I pray that we never take that for granted. I pray that the glory of the Lord will stay here, and I pray that his presence will be strong even as we begin this revival. The second thing I want you to see, and these are four things to pray for. Pray with a humble heart. Pray for God's presence to continue, and pray with a humble heart. Second Corinthians, I mean Chronicles 7, 14, and you know this one. But folks, it's very, very important. If my people, all right, talking about Christians, who are called by my name will humble themselves. Folks, humility is so important when we are talking about God. All right, humility. Uh, you know, we don't deserve salvation. Uh, you know, and, and when, when we think of who God is, and how powerful he is, but he, he's setting up in heaven, ruling the world, ruling the earth. Uh, he is, you know, Jesus is our high priest. And any time that you would go into a king, okay, we're talking about Old Testament times, you would bow before that king, all right? And folks, there's, there's no man on earth we should be bowing to at all, okay? All right, I respect off the offices but when it comes to humbleness folks i am telling you uh, we need to be humble before god we need to realize that he loves us and uh, he has given us life every day you live is a gift from god and so we need to humble ourselves before him and pray and seek his face folks i don't have to ask myself well, do you think God wants revival in our church? Do you think he wants revival to continue? I guarantee you he wants that. But folks, prayer is the key. We have to keep praying. We have to be seeking his face. And that is his will, not only for our individual lives, but for the life of the church. And turn from their wicked ways, I believe it's Psalm 66, 18 that says, if I regard iniquity in my heart, God doesn't hear me. Okay? So part of revival, and I'm going to speak of that here in just a few minutes, is turning from our wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven, and I will forgive their sin and heal their land. Folks, we live in a troubled land. I cannot believe how many... Uh, shootings have transpired in the last week, all right? I mean, people just, they're, they're, they are, uh, I, you know, Satan is just having a field day. And we need to pray, yes, for revival, but we need to pray for our country, folks. 
We need to pray for our leaders. It is just, you know, the shootings are just unbelievable. Uh, the amount and the number, you know, seven shot over in Henrietta, Oklahoma. Folks, that's not far from us at all. And we need to pray for healing for our land. And uh, God uh, uh, will forgive. I, and and that's, that's the thing, folks. Uh, you know, God is listening for us, and in, in the, the prayer that he wants to hear most is, Lord, I'm sorry. Lord, I did wrong. Lord, please forgive me. And I'm telling you, when you can be right with God, when you are right with God, and you are on your knees, and when you are humble in your prayers, I'm telling you, you've got the ear of heaven. God is hearing. God is listening. And folks, I can't tell you how many prayers that we have had answered. And, and I believe, again, the reason things are going, the reason we're experiencing revival before revival is because of prayer. Prayer is a key to revival. So we see you need to pray for God's presence to continue. We need to pray with a humble heart. Number three, we need to pray with a true burden. A true burden. Look at Romans chapter 9. Romans 9. And this is Paul speaking here. I tell the truth in Christ, I am not lying. Why, why would Paul make that statement? I mean, of all people, he wrote a third of the New Testament, but yet he says of his own self, I'm telling you the truth, I'm not lying about this. Because what he states is almost unbelievable. And I want to use the word almost. But I think he was, I, I do think he was sincere in what he was saying. I'm not saying, you know, he was right and wrong. I'm just simply saying for him to make that statement. And in the next part, my conscience also bearing witness in the Holy Spirit. He's saying, I'm not taking this lightly, okay? I'll put a stamp of the Holy Spirit on it. I'll, I'll say, you know, you know and, and again, I, you know, I, I don't know that this is the phrase that we should, so help me God. Okay, he was saying, I am dead serious about what's going on, that I have great sorrow and continue uh, and continual grief in my heart. Now, what is he talking about? I believe he's talking about burden praying. Burden praying. Or you can say praying with a burden. And here's what I find. The more intense I pray, the more it literally becomes labor okay again you know there's this old adage you know man and i and I, it's been a long time since anybody has mentioned this matter of fact it's been a long time but i heard a phrase one time well if all i had to do is preach a couple of times a week man i'd ha i'd take your job in a heartbeat well folks i got news for you that they don't know what preaching is when I get through here on Sunday morning, I'm, I'm telling you folks, I, I feel like a, a wash rag that has just ring, rung out, all right? Because I take, I take it very serious. I really do. And, and we are God's spokespersons. We put our heart, soul, and body into every sermon that we preach. And Paul, I mean, you, you just think of his life. Folks, I'm telling you, he makes me tired reading about him. He's, he was all over the place. He was a missionary. He was a church planner. He was an evangelist. He was a soul winner. Okay, he was all this. He, he, he did so many things. And here's what he's saying. I had burden. And let me say this. There's a difference in being burdened with something and being bothered by something. The TV advertisements, they're trying to bother you. They're trying to hit your conscience or you'll feel sorry for somebody and you'll look at that number and you'll do something there. And I'm not saying it's right or wrong, okay? I'm simply saying they're appealing to your conscience. Being burdened is appealing to your heart, okay? So Paul prefaces by saying this. Now, now listen to this. For I, wish, for I could wish that myself were cursed from Christ for my brethren, my countrymen, according to to the flesh 
who are Israelites, to whom pertain in the adoption and the glory and the covenants, and are given the law and the service of God and the promises of whom the fathers, from whom, according to the flesh, Christ came and is overall the eternally blessed God. Why would he list all that? What was he saying? Well, folks, if you're a curse from God, you're going to hell. Okay? He's saying, if my countrymen would be saved, I would go to hell myself for them. Man, that's just, that's, I mean, in our human standards, that's just crazy. That's what people would say. But that was what he was saying. These Jews are God's chosen people. Paul came out of that lifestyle and the law and all of that. He was a Pharisee of Pharisees, folks. All right? He was taught by one of the best Pharisees. And he was simply saying, my heart's desire is to see my countrymen saved. You say, well, what, what's, what's that got to do with revival? Well, folks, our heart's desire needs to start first in our own homes. We need to make sure our whole family is saved. And again, we can't make them be saved, but I'm talking about praying, burden, praying. And the difference between burden and bothering it, bothered, you'll do it when you think of it. Burden praying is you do it every day. It's not a routine. It's just intense prayer. God, save, and you fill in the blank. And then after we look at our family, all right, we look, uh, you know, at people we work with. We look at our neighbors. We look at acquaintances. And one way we can, folks, for them to be saved, they need to be under the sound of the gospel. And part of that is inviting them to church, getting a relationship with them, and really, the, the best thing is one-on-one evangelism where you share the gospel with them. So he's saying that's what it means to be praying with a burden. Matter of fact, James 5. And I know you know this one, but I, I still, I think it's so evident. James 5, 16. Confesses your, confess your trespasses to one another. Okay? Confession. Okay, we, we got to get that sin out of our life. And it says, and pray for one another that you may be healed. And you have to understand, man, I'm all for uh, a physical healing, and God has shown that in the life of our church. But I'm telling you, the greatest healing there is is spiritual healing. It's people getting saved. It's Christians get, getting their hearts right with God. There's emotional healing. There's mental healing. There's all kinds of healing. But I'm telling you, that spiritual one is the most important Now here it is, the effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Effective, getting the ear of God, getting the attention of God. Fervent is praying from the heart, consistently, persistently, and with a burden. So we need to continue to pray with a true burden. And the last thing we need to do, we need to pray with an attitude of brokenness. An attitude of brokenness. Look at Psalm 32. Psalm 32. Psalm 32. And of course, David had wrote this psalm. Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven. I don't know about you folks, but I thank God for the forgiveness of sin. I thank God for that. Whose sin is covered. Jesus' blood covers our sin. Doesn't mean we have the attitude, well, I'll just sin and ask forgiveness. We should not have that flippant attitude, and I'm telling you, it's the wrong attitude to have. Sin should not just bother us. Sin should just, you know, just hurt us, okay? And, and we sin, but, you know, we, we can confess. 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Verse 2, blessed is the man to whom the Lord does not impute iniquity. What is he saying? He doesn't hold it over our heads. He doesn't bring it up. If you truly ask for forgiveness, okay, Jesus' blood on the cross paid for our sins. And it says, and in whose spirit there is no deceit. When I kept silent, my, bro- my bones grew old through my groaning all the day long. Folks, I am telling you, 
sin should bother our conscience. Sin should bother our hearts. Verse 4, for night and day your hand was heavy upon me, and my vitality was turned into the drought of summer. And what is he talking about? He's talking about the conviction of sin. Folks, I don't know about you, but you need, you need to thank God for the conviction of sin. Do you realize that's, that's one of the reasons you should know that you're saved? I would be more worried about if sin didn't bother me with my relationship with Christ. And I'm telling you, David was just ignoring it and ignoring it, and he's pinning here just saying, man, I've ignored it long enough. Okay, I've, Lord, you know, and, and God will always convict you of sin. The Holy Spirit will always convict you of sin. Now look at verse 5, for I acknowledge my sin to you. What is that? That's confession. We have conviction, we have confession, and in, in, in my iniquity I have not hidden, and I will confess my con transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. And forgiveness is the third thing. So we have conviction, we have confession, and then we have uh, forgiveness. The last one I want to share with you, Psalm 139, Psalm 139, verse 23 and 24. Search me, O God, and know my heart. And folks, we all need to do this. We need to say, God, I mean, I really do. I do it every night, okay? Every night I ask myself three questions. Am I right with God? Am I right with my family? Am I right with my fellow man? Okay, God, family, and fellow man. And ask God to search me. God, is there something I've forgotten about or is there some sin that I have not acknowledged? Okay? And unlike me, God has a good memory. <laughs> All right? He sees, what, he sees everything you do. He knows everything you say. Okay? And so you're not fooling God. He knows everything about you. Search me, O oh God, and know my heart. Try me and know my anxieties. Okay? You could throw the word worries in there. Okay? You know what? And again, worries, being anxious, you know a lot of times what that is? That is the conviction of sin, folks. We have not done business with God. We just haven't done business with God. And then it says in verse 24, and see if, there's, if there is any wicked way in me and lead me in the path of everlasting. And folks, what brokenness is, is being broken over sin. And I do, folks. I remember revivals. I remember times when there were people so broken I remember especially at Cameron Baptist Church, the, the church I, I, I grew up in, that during revival times and when this Holy Spirit was, they would come to this altar and you would literally hear them. I mean, if we're a lot in them standing in the back, you would hear them crying and, and wailing out to God. And folks, I'm telling you, there was just something. It almost created a holy hush in the sanctuary where we was. And so, again, I, I know this is our smallest crowd of the three services. It's always big on Sunday morning. It's bigger on Sunday night. But I truly believe if these, this many people right here, this number, would practice all this and, and really pray, I'm talking sincere prayer. I'm, I just, I'm, I mean, we have seen the glory of God. Matter of fact, uh, Steve can tell you this. Uh, I walked in uh, the association office yesterday, and the DOM asked me, what are y'all doing over there? And I said, listening, listening at God, what are you doing, man, every week, you know? You'd be surprised, Cody, of how many people read our, our Facebook page or whatever, I, or what is it? What is it? I can't even think of it. Yeah, the updates that we have. Matter of fact, later on, one of our senior pastors there, pastor of a little church over in Ratcliffe, he said the same thing to me. What are y'all doing? And I said, I'm just telling you the presence of God is there. 
okay? It's God, all right? And so as we think about this week, okay, we're going to start on Sunday morning, and I'm going to ask you, you have chosen to be here tonight, and I'm going to ask you to be, and, and with me, to be prayer warriors. I want you praying every night that revival will continue. I want you praying that, you know, one of those things, wouldn't it be cool if it would be like what, what was happening earlier in those colleges to where we said, you know what, it's Wednesday night, but let's go another night. Let's go Thursday night. Wouldn't that be a cool thing? And folks, God can do that. God can do that. But we must be men and women of prayer. And here's where we're going to change it up. I'm going to pray first, and then I've asked Steve to pray last. And we have a microphone right there in the middle. And if you want to pray somewhere in between there, I want to spend time in prayer, praying specifically for revival. No one has to get up, okay? But if you want to come and pray, I want to just make these, this last part of our service a season of prayer time. Would you pray with me? Father, thank you for this night. And God, I thank you for your word. Gosh, your word is so true. It's so fresh. It's so honest. And there is a formula for revival. And God, I pray that we would be men and women of prayer. God, I would pray that we would take prayer seriously. And really, if we're praying hard, it is work. And so God, I pray that we would uh, learn to block things out and spend more time in prayer. And God, we just pray for Dr. Johnny Lewis. And God, I just pray that you'd just speak to him about the sermons he is going to preach. God, I pray that you would just fill him with your Holy Spirit. I ask for traveling grace as he comes uh, over and, and to be with us. And God, I pray that you would just, uh, Lord, just uh, uh, guard him and watch over him. God, I pray that you would just help, Lord, him to, in his mind and in his heart, just to focus totally on you and the message that you have for us. God, I pray this would just be an extension of the revival that we are having right now. And God, I pray that people in our city would know that it isn't us and it's not even about us. God, it's about you. It's about Jesus. It's about salvation. It is about the baptismal waters moving. It's about you gathering people. God, we want to be your people. We're not Jewish per se, but we are your chosen ones. And God, I thank you that you have brought us to this place in the life of our church. God, I pray that you would just use us as prayer warriors. Lord, these next four days and, and throughout the revival, God, I pray that we would block out time and that we would pray and that we could see your glory. God, you are a miracle worker. God, I pray that you would even work miracles uh, this next week. God, thank you for the faithfulness of your people, and thank you that we do have prayer warriors in our church. And God, I pray that uh, you would just uh, touch our, our church and God, all that is going on there. And God, I pray that uh, even, even if we needed to, God, that everyone would be willing to go an extra night or another night, Lord, just to see your glory. God, it could start right here. Revival in this city could start in this place. So God, we give ourselves to you. We love you, we praise you, and we worship you. In Jesus' name, I pray.